16 of the Ape and Bird Show with no ape. That is right. Steve is under the weather, too sick to record with us today. He sends his apologies. Uh, we are really the Bird and Burb Show today. Uh, we had a chat internally uh, and decided that we should still do a little bit of a roundup show uh, with yours truly. So apologies, you're only going to hear my voice today. It was a little bit too late in the piece to uh, to get a, a guest on. Uh, so we're just going to go for maybe 20 or 30 minutes in a, in a roundup type episode uh, today. So for those that are just joining the show, this is... Uh, this is Greg Oakford speaking. I am uh, the bird part of the show. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned off the top, this is going to be a little bit of a different experience for me uh, hosting uh, by myself and talking into the abyss. Uh, so if I start rambling and I don't have Steve to, uh, to pick me up on, I apologize uh, in advance. But uh, let's get stuck into the show. Uh, I must admit, uh, Steve and I sort of have a, a couple of texts throughout the week and start to sort of formulate our thoughts on what the topics are going to be for the show. And we sort of said, you know, a couple of days ago, it was going to be uh, a relatively uh, quiet show because uh, there wasn't a lot happening. Uh, but I, I mean, over the last couple of days, we've seen a, a real tick up of flaws. Um, there was probably a little bit of uh, a hesitation that ETH price was going to, uh, to tank later this week. Uh, but we've sort of seen the opposite in the last 24 to 48 hours. We've seen a real bounce uh, in, in the board ape floor uh, back to nearly 75 after sort of hitting lows, I think, of around low 60s, mid 60s. Uh, we've also seen a jump up from, from mutant apes, a little bit of movement with uh, moonbirds and doodles as well. Uh, some of the sort of more marquee uh, collections and D gods on uh, Solana has been part of the news cycle this week too. But how could we not mention pudgy penguins really the uh the week uh the big sale uh 400 eth a couple of days ago or uh, a very cool 630,000 usd uh for pudgy penguins uh the number one rare penguin in the collection uh facing left uh it was quite funny actually i went on linkedin uh the other day and i was tagged in a couple of posts of uh, some people that i i don't necessarily know but um certainly they post a lot about web three uh and tagged me in uh, a few posts around like sort of some thought process of trying to be uh rational and, and analytical of why this pudgy penguin went for uh for six hundred and thirty thousand usd so it, it is quite funny i i i really just said look it, it's part of the it's part of memes um you know it's got some meme value the pudgy penguins they've obviously got a new ceo over the last couple of uh months where holders and and uh collectors are feeling uh you know, probably quite bullish on where on where uh, uh, the, uh, that CEO is going to take uh, the project. But um, yeah, it, it was funny for me to uh, to look at some of these LinkedIn comments, uh, trying to uh, to have some rationale about uh, the NFT uh, world. And I just said, for for someone to understand the NFT world, they should stop thinking rationally and analytical. So anyway, uh, I thought that was quite funny. Um, and uh, yeah, shout out to Pudgy Penguins that are. Uh, that are on a, a great comeback trail. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting if some other collections will catch fire. Uh, I still think that Cool Cats has got a, another another hand to play uh, when it's all said and done. So it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, with uh, some of these other collections. But shout out to the Pudgies that have ruled uh, this week in NFTs. Um, some other things that uh, have happened over the last uh, five, six, seven days seen sandbox uh alpha season three um you know i believe there's around 12 or 13 collections uh where you'll be able to have a playable avatar uh if you own one of those nfts from um one of these uh 12 or 13 collections uh some of those are the snoop avatars world of women bored apes moonbirds cool cats uh, Steve Aoki, um, Clonex, Gutter Cat Gang. So shout out to the Gang Gang uh, and a number of others. So uh, do look into to that. Um, I, I saw a, a number of my fellow Moonbird collectors actually uh, showing off on Twitter, um, including Lacos with his uh, rare glitch bird uh, and what his, uh, his voxel character looked like. Um, so that's an exciting development there uh, in, in the sandbox meta, uh, metaverse. Uh, 10k tf uh, series two um, coming very very soon i believe even overnight so 
um, check out of your eligible uh, for some derivative works there. I believe World of Women Galaxy is probably your lowest entry point. Um, we've seen a little bit of a movement in, in floor price on World of Women and World of Women Galaxy uh, over the last couple of, uh, couple of days. Um, geez, I'm, I'm starting to talk uh, quite, quite fast. This is definitely an interesting dynamic when I'm just looking at myself, looking at the screen and uh, recording this solo. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely a different dynamic. Um, we also have seen Grails 2. Um, I know we've spent a little bit of time in previous weeks talking about Grails 2 and um, that reveal of the 25 artists is actually happening in about six, seven hours time from the time I'm recording this. So it's going to be at 3 a.m. Uh, Australian East Coast uh, Standard Time. Um, I am not getting up for that one. I, I told Steve last week I sold my Grails Mint Pass on this particular occasion. Um, I actually like some of the art that that is available, um, but I decided to forego my, my selection on this particular Grails. Um, we have seen that the highest minted uh, Grails piece is number 22. Um, so the, the website, if you do want to have a look at um, my... Uh, my computer is just playing up a little bit on me. Here we, here we go. It's collective.proof.xyz forward slash grails dash two. I know that's a mouthful, but just once again, collective.proof.xyz forward slash grails dash two uh, being the number, number two. So you can see all the artwork there. Um, so by tomorrow, by the time you're potentially listening to this, the artist will be revealed. Um, so it was uh, Grail number 22 with a total mint count of 136 um, that took the cake on this particular occasion. Um, interesting on, uh, enough, uh, there was actually, I believe, 80 Grail's mint passes that were unused. So uh, that's probably around 7 or 8% of the, the total uh, mints that were available. So uh, if I'm a, a mint pass holder, if I've minted, I'm probably happy that those 80 people uh, didn't take action. Um, but uh, yeah, a little bit of a waste. And I think it's a, it's probably a, a good conversation for Steve and I to have on a future episode of just how difficult it can be, even when you're holding something that is quite valuable, like a Grail's mint pass. I mean, uh, those were floating around sort of three to four ETH for a couple of uh, a couple of weeks, um, why these artworks were introduced and uh, to leave that type of money on the table where you're not either selling the mint pass like I did or uh, minting your grail um, is, is a, a common occurrence in NFT land. I'm sure many of our listeners are in uh, a huge number of projects and it's quite difficult to keep up. You know, you're probably juggling work or uh, whatever gigs you're you're into and then you've got to stay on top of all this that have often quite strict time limits and um, you know it's 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 going to be fascinating to see some other tools that are being built out I'm actually in a project called probably something and I don't want this to be a, a shill or anything but um, you know there's a there's a builder named Nat Fax uh, I met her in New York and and I knew her um, in discord previously she's in the proof collective too she's actually built a tool called Lifeboat. Um, I'm sure there'll be more tools like this that will come into the system soon. Uh, but ultimately, this tool is actually enabling you to sort of have a dashboard where all of your notifications uh, and essentially claims and things that you're eligible for for being part of projects. It's sort of that one-stop shop rather than being in 17 or 28 different discords and having to go to all the announcements and dig into the chat and actually find out what's happening and what those time periods and limits are, what the cutoffs are. Um, this Lifeboat product is is trying to give it to you in that, in like I mentioned, in the dashboard and you know, sort of one-stop shop. So, um, you know, we, we, we might take a, a little bit of a deeper dive into into Lifeboat and just any other pro products that are out there that uh, can help us as collectors um, stay on top of things and uh, not sort of make uh, costly mistakes where I'm sure these 80 unminted grails uh, have probably been from Proof Collective members that are busy in their own lives, uh, lives I should say, and have been airdropped uh, their Grails Mint Pass. And no matter how many sort of uh, tweets have gone out from uh, Team Proof or Discord messages, they've just uh, missed the boat. So uh, it will be interesting to, to loop back on this conversation next week with Steve around Grails because we will know who the artists are. Um, I mentioned the highest minted... Uh, Grail was number 22. 
Um, the lowest minted grails, and this is about sort of the game theory that is attached with uh, with grails, is is often people will look at the mint count and go, well, I might actually opt for one of the grails that has been minted on the lower side um, because that creates obviously more scarcity. Uh, and if I if it does happen to be quite a recognizable artist or even an artist that maybe in three to five years blows up because that is sort of proof's intention is to get a mixed bag of existing artists that some of the top 10, top 20 grossing uh, NFT artists of all time but also throw in some up and comers. So, you know, if you're minting a grail that uh, is is of an up and comer, um, maybe it's not necessarily overly valuable today, but what does that look like in three, five and 10 years time? So the lowest minted uh, grails uh, were number five, uh, number 12 and number 16. So 16 is an interesting one, actually. Before I sold my my Mint Pass, um, you know, it's in sort of an animated, um, looks like a, almost like an old school disco floor lighting up with, you know, it's not a basketball, but it sort of looks like a basketball that's rolling downhill. I quite like it. Um, it, it is a lot to look at on the screen and it might get a bit annoying if you had it on a, t on a sort of TV screen at, at home um, playing all the time, but yeah, I, I quite like that one. I, I probably would have considered that one for, for myself. Um, and then also uh, number 10, I was surprised by. So 10 has got a lot going on. It's it's very bright. It almost, um, yeah, it almost uh, looks like you're at some type of like bush doof. Not that I've been to many of those, but uh, it's, it's got a lot, it's got a lot going on for it. And uh, it was only minted uh, 42 times. So I, I thought that one would have been a little bit higher. Uh, and just to end on the, the grail sort of speculation, um, just to give you a bit of an idea of some of the artists that, um, you know, the, the discord, um, there's a sort of a private grails channel that people were speculating on people that held grails passes into that in that discord. Um, so some of the artists that were were mentioned are uh, Josie Bellini. Uh, I believe that um, uh, Grail number twenty one um, people were thinking could have been Josie's. I mean, it still could. We haven't had any uh, reveal yet. Uh, Tom Sachs, for those that are aware of Tom Sachs, and obviously he uh, started the uh, Tom Sachs uh, Tom Sachs Rocket Factory last year, which is a very very interesting project. Uh, Matt Kane, for those that are aware of uh, the art project Gazers. Um, so uh, there's been a lot of talk that Matt Kane is one of the artists. Uh, also uh, Drifter Shoots. So um, Grail number 13 uh, is, is highly speculated that that is Drifter Shoots for those that are aware of Drift. And also Xcopy. Um, so Xcopy on this Google sheet I'm looking at right now is actually earmarked as potentially grail number 18 so you know if, if that that does come true or if x copy is in this collection you know i would expect that that that's going to obviously attract a, a price premium um come three you know three thirty four a.m tomorrow morning australian time when these artists are revealed and if you want to catch the replay or, or watch that live i'm sure that will be on the proof youtube channel so that's enough on grails now um, why we are on proof, um, there is the big future proof announcement coming next, uh, what is that, Thursday, it'll be Friday our time, I think, the first, no, I apologies, it's on the 30th, so it'll be uh, Wednesday the 31st for our Australian listeners, um, Tuesday the 30th for uh, most people that are in Europe and America. So uh, there, uh, there's been sort of a little bit of a preview of what that's going to entail that we touched on last week. Um, but I'm personally very uh, interested into seeing some of the, the sort of um, mock-ups of what, of what Project High Rise is going to deliver. I think, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about that and, and it's going to be interesting to see what the roadmap for uh, Proof, Moonbirds, Oddities, et cetera, is going to be for... Um, the coming sort of six months. Uh, and I'd love to chat to Steve after uh, or next week after that has been revealed. It will be very interesting to see what happens in this market. Um, you know, whether uh, flaws sort of uh, respond in a positive way, negative way, or, or if they're just neutral. Um, but we've certainly seen a, a fair bit of a run up in oddities uh, over the last seven days too. I think touching almost a 1.8 ETH floor as I speak uh, right now after being down as low as I think 0.7. So uh, enough about proof. Um, 
I wanted to touch too on another project that I got into in October and I, I sent Steve a text about this one um, earlier this week and and he was definitely keen to, to chat about this one. So we might have to pick it up at a, at a future date and just talk more broadly uh, in terms of sort of some of these bigger well-renowned business people, quote unquote, you know, sort of social media celebrities um, that have really struggled to have cut through, um, you know, with with NFTs. And Tom Bilyeu, I'm, I'm uh, speaking about directly here and his Impact uh, Theory Founders Key project. So um, for those that are unaware, Tom, um, Tom launched three tiers of uh, essentially like utility keys back in October last year. Um, there was sort of a legendary tier, uh, heroic tier, uh, and a relentless tier. Um, so, you know, legendary being at the top. And, you know, I, I had uh, I had minted V friends back in May. I'll just give you sort of my, my personal backstory. And I, I, I minted two Series 1 uh, V friends. I got a couple of characters that I was um, personally resonated with. Um, but I only got a core and sort of a rare and a rare is a one of eight and uh, you know, everything in hindsight is wonderful, but there's no doubt that I would have sort of freed up funds to, to go sort of whether it was a gift code or a spectacular. And, um, I, I felt like I, I sort of under invested to a degree, um, with V friends and I was really bullish on what I thought Tom's founders key was going to be. Uh, I, I had consumed a lot of his content around Web3. And this is not this is not a hit piece on Tom, I should preface too. I, I think he's handled this situation with dignity and grace. And I think he'll come out the other side still. But it's been a, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to say anything other than a bit of a disaster the last 10 months, just in terms of community expectations and probably the way that uh, Tom did his mint. Uh, and, and I think a bit of a victim of, of uh, where the market was at the time too, with, with ETH sort of reasonably high in that October period. And Tom charged three ETH. He, he came out publicly and said, I don't know where this project is sort of going to be priced at, but I want to get people on allow lists and I don't want to gas war. And essentially he, he did a, um, a, a Dutch auction but he had this 24 hour window before the Dutch auction started where you could essentially pay the top price for one of the three keys. And the top price for the legendary key was three ETH. The top price for uh, the heroic key was 1.5. And for the relentless, it was 0.1. And the quantities were roughly at the time, I think 2,700 for the legendary uh, 7,300 for the heroic, uh, and 10,000 for the relentless and it, relentless key, obviously being the, the sort of baseline minimum, uh, floor product of his offering. So 20,000 keys in total. And as I said, I, I was consuming a lot of Tom's content sort of through, I would say August, September, right up to mint. And. I was really impressed with the way that he was talking about Web3 NFTs. And and look, I, there's no doubt that I've watched a fair bit of Tom's content on YouTube before. I've always sort of found his interviewing style pretty good. Um, and, and it was probably this little bit of FOMO for me where I, I again, sort of thought I miss V friends going in hard. So I'm going to I'm gonna go in hard on the, the impact theory founders key. Um, so I actually bought two keys at 3 ETH. And, um, and I think, I think ETH was probably around 3000 us at the time. So they are expensive keys, maybe even a little bit higher than 3000 USD per ETH, uh, at the time. Um, then what happened was there was a lot of people that waited for the Dutch auction to start 24 hours later. So a lot of people that bought in at three, probably essentially his most loyal fans, and then there was a lot of people that bought in at 1.5. So, so the Dutch auction actually started at three, like 24 hours um, later after the allow list, 24-hour um, uh, window. And it went down and it got to the floor of 1.5. And a lot of people scooped up keys at 1.5. And I actually scooped up a third legendary key at 1.5. So I've now invested, what's that? Seven and a half. Uh, and then I bought, bought up, a bunch of relentless keys as well. Um, the heroic 
middle tier keys. And I always find this with collections that often that middle, when people are sort of doing, you know, high, medium and low entry points, I, I think the middle generally suffers. Most people want either the rarest or the floor. And we see that with 10K collections as well, that, um, you know, unless a collection is sort of, you know, in the, the crypto punks realm or board apes um, and the market's hot, it, it's sort of like, if you've got that mid tier, um, it doesn't necessarily equate to sort of a, a, a higher floor price or a higher price that you can attract. Um, it might be just above floor. Um, but we were airdropped as sort of people that were bought in at three ETH because I think Tom realized there was quite a bit of um, quite a bit of negativity in the Discord to say why did you charge essentially your most loyal fans three ETH uh, and then essentially people were coming in and swooping one and a half and sort of you're you've disadvantaged your most loyal fans and I can see that argument but I also feel like. You know, with with Dutch auctions, you know, Kevin Rose with his Proof Collective pass, he started at five ETH, went down to was meant to go to point five. It it minted out at one, so people bought in at five at the time. Other people bought in at one. Um, you know, someone that bought in at five versus one is probably going to feel a little bit like ah, uh, you know, I, I what do, do I get anything extra? But I think that is pass and part um, part and parcel of a Dutch auction. We know sort of like, you know, what is the price you're willing to pay without sort of missing out. Um, so I don't, I don't think Tom had any ill will against his community. I don't think he was trying to extract maximum value from his fan base. I just, just don't think he had a good pulse on what was happening or, or where it was going to mint out at. And I think he was quite scared of ca causing a, a, a gas war. So long story short, I think it was earlier this year. I can't remember what month, but there was a, this is a lot of unhappy people in the discord and Tom did uh, sort of dismiss floor price as being a priority for his community. And I think, again, that upset a lot of people like he would come out on calls and, you know, again, he would act with dignity and grace, but he would say, you know, floor price isn't a part of the equation. You're essentially buying an experience with me and I'm going to add all this value and I'm going to do all these things. But I don't think he or his team had a lot uh, planned. I think they were sort of going to mint these things, see what it was like, and then sort of start to build from there. Um, but I think, you know, it's it's hard when you're charging that much money. Um, you know, people are, especially when you're, when someone's paid three ETH and, and everyone else is sort of scooping these same, same keys up at 1.5. Um, so Tom actually offered something that I still yet to see anyone else do. I'm sure Steve or someone might correct me on this, but Tom offered a buyback um, earlier this year. And essentially any key that you had minted, you, would, uh, you could have it bought back by Tom uh, and he would uh, refund you the same amount that you purchased that key. And I believe it was even for secondary. So if you'd bought on secondary, uh, he was going to refund that. Um, that's a little bit of a head scratcher for me though, because I, you know, that, that one for him, um, you know, could be quite a, quite a drainer for, from, from a capital standpoint, but I, I got, uh, my two, three ETH keys refunded and I kept the one that I bought for 1.5 because I still wanted to keep uh, a little bit of exposure to Tom's project. I, I still felt like, um, it would be something that I would keep in the portfolio. So I, I kept my legendary key and a few of the other lower tier keys. But Tom is actually now offering a second buyback. And if you are a holder of the Impact Theory Founders Key, you're going to have till September 1st. I think that's September 1st um, American time. But look out in the Discord if you are a holder. Um, so it's a, it's a very interesting dynamic that the negativity has just continued. And, I, and I've got to say that I, I spent quite a bit of time in Discord late last year in the Impact Theory one. And, you know... I spend most of my time in, in the Proof and Moonbirds ones these days in 2022. So I haven't spent a lot of time there, but you know, I've sort of had a scan through and seen the sentiment and there's still a lot of big believers in Tom, but there's just a lot of unhappy people because I think they're expecting uh, this to be a project where flaw was a factor and for not the founder to sort of um, say, look, I don't want to deal with floor. I can't control floor. And, and I think that's a fair statement. It's very hard for founders um, to control the floor. We've heard Steve talk about that on, on previous episodes as well. But 
very, very interesting to me that there's now this second buyback um, opportunity. So um, I'm looking at it myself, but you know, you're also looking at the price of ETH uh, from October versus what it is um, you know, today. So for some people, it might make sense actually to try to sell it on secondary. There's still a decent market for the legendary key, maybe around that like 1.5, 1.6. Um, but uh, very, very interesting. And, and Tom has come out. I listened to a call uh, that he had for legendary call, uh, holders um, over the weekend. And he essentially, um, you know, all credit to him, he's owning that there was some issues and probably some over promises and maybe some some wording that he shouldn't have used previously. He did. He definitely hyped this project up. You know, Steve sent me a text the other day saying, geez, I remember how hyped it was in, in October. Uh, but, uh, but ultimately, um, you know, Tom has addressed the fact that, you know, he is about providing experiences and there's going to be airdrops and there's going to be freebies and there's going to be things. But, you know, my gut feel is he doesn't want to play the same game as everybody else is playing in terms of sort of uh, announcements and teasers and all this type of stuff that we see with some of the other bigger, more notable collections. And I think Tom is in this Web3 game for the long haul, uh, but I just don't think he wants collectors that are putting premiums on floor price, which if we're being perfectly honest, we know, you know, most collectors uh, do put a premium on, on floor price when they're thinking about NFTs. Uh, it's certainly not every collector. Um, there are other, uh, you know, reasons to collect, whether it's art or access or this, that or the other. But um, yeah, I, I think this has been a really, really interesting case study to say someone with such a massive audience and a, a pretty good reputation and can certainly speak and talk the talk. He does have the gift of the gab. Um, but it's, it's just been to me just an absolute mishit for, for Tom. Um, but again, to his credit, I think he's going to try to pick up the pieces. He's going to, uh, provide the door, a, a, a nice exit for people to sort of essentially get their money back. Although in a USD perspective, you, you're still probably taking a bit of a, bit of a loss, uh, compared to, to October. Um, but it's certainly more than some of the rugs we've seen with, uh, with other projects. So, um, I'd be interesting to hear Steve's thoughts on, um, you know, the impact theory founders key, uh, maybe next week we can loop back on this topic. Um, another thing we saw actually just overnight was the, the kingship. So Jimmy.eth, Jimmy McNeil is, is uh, sort of metaverse band using uh, a number of his bored apes and a mutant ape. Um, they've actually done a partnership with M&Ms. Yes, not the rapper, but the actual uh, lolly brand, the, uh, the candy M&Ms. Um, so limited edition cele celebratory gift boxes that are a collaboration between the Kingship, which hasn't really produced anything other than just sort of teaser videos at this stage. I don't think there's a song yet, but um, M&Ms have entered the foray with Kingship uh, and you can buy your boxes of M&Ms for uh, anywhere between, I think about uh, maybe it's uh, 20 or $30 on the low end, but I can see that this limited edition one of a hundred is, is actually a hundred dollars. So. Uh, that makes sense in the NFT world, right? You know, $100 M&Ms. But um, they're all branded up really nicely. Um, it does look good. Um, but it, I think more so than anything, is it's going to be interesting to see in the next 6 to 12 months some of these sort of... We have heard Jimmy defend, you know, the traditional IP rights model of, of Bored Apes and many of the other projects, you know, all the CCO drama happened uh, a few weeks ago with Moonbirds and, and Jimmy's been... Um, you know, definitely in the camp of sort of team, uh, you know, IP rights. And you can see why when he's sort of uh, starting to cut deals uh, like this using his IP and he is more than justified to do that. So uh, it is going to be interesting. And, you know, for M&Ms, maybe this is a really good way to, uh, to just dip their toe into the uh, NFT and Web3 community. Um, by uh, sort of piggybacking on on Jimmy's brand and obviously the Bored Ape and Mutant Apes brand and doing a small collaboration there. So uh, who knows what we'll see from M&M's uh, moving forward. So 
Look, that's probably about it for this week. I wanted to keep this a short show. It has definitely been a very odd experience for me uh, to just be talking uh, by myself uh, into the microphone. Uh, I definitely like the dynamic of having a bit of banter and bouncing back and forwards with Steve. Um, but we did want to do a little show. So hopefully uh, Steve is feeling better. I'm sure he will be back next week. I know he's absolutely head down at the moment too. Uh, with all things NF Team. So hopefully we can get a, a, a uh, update from Steve next week of what's happening there. Uh, and we should actually say for our uh, Gold Ape uh, co-host, I did see a tweet. We might end with this. Earlier this week, there was a group chat I'm in that we were uh, giving him a little bit of stick about. But uh, he was named, I think, the 31st uh, most influential uh, influencer or with his Twitter account was the 31st biggest on crypto Twitter. So, uh, or NFT Twitter. So, shout out to uh, to our friend, the Gold Ape Steve, Mister at Day Twenty Five, who is joining the uh, NFT Twitter elites. So, congratulations on that uh, fame, Steve. So, that's about it for this week. Uh, our regular disclaimer: obviously, none of this has been financial advice. This is for entertainment and informational purposes only. I thank you for uh, joining us on this uh, quite unusual show where it's just my voice for, uh, for 30 minutes. Thanks for sticking with us on episode 16 of the No uh, Ape and Bird Show this week. Uh, next week, we will return with the full Ape and Bird Show. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, have a great week.